Hey everybody, Aaron from the Ball Pit here, back with a, a new sort of show that I kind of just want to give a try. I'm going to call it The Writer's Block, and it's pretty much just a, a show or a space for me to discuss any creative interest that I feel like pursuing at that moment. It can take many different forms, many different topics, etc., etc. You'll see what I mean the more episodes I post. But the first episode that I want to talk about is something that's been on my mind a lot lately, which is kind of the modern state of TV shows and the way that everything's working. And the main thing I want to discuss is how, in my opinion, at least in the current state of how TV shows and TV networks and everything's, everything works, I don't think we'll ever get another show like a Game of Thrones, like this massive cultural landmark, other than its ending, because, hey, 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 I didn't write it. Um, but like a, this massive cultural landmark, I don't think it'll ever exist like that again. And there's a couple different reasons for that. The first of which is the the main format that a lot of um, a lot of these like streaming services or whatever are kind of going with in terms of how they release their shows. So you know, before it was kind of like you know when the new Game of Thrones. I'm gonna keep using Game of Thrones because. I'm watching it right now. I'm just going to keep using it as my example. When the new Game of Thrones episode would drop, you know, people would be like, say it's Tuesday, right? That's when the episode drops on Tuesday. It's like Tuesday night. That's what people are doing. Everybody's ready for it. You drop one episode a week, ends on a cliffhanger. You have to wait till the next week to see it. And you compare that to the modern way of kind of um, binging. It gets dropped. And I know that there's there are exceptions. I don't know which... Uh, streaming services provide those exceptions, but there are exceptions. But a lot of the the main way, especially on like Netflix or something, is the whole season gets dropped at once, and then you can pursue watching it at your own pace. And the the problem that that happens is it 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 like gets rid of the previous environment that existed in a sort of water cooler esque cultural landmark, in the sense that. On say, say Tuesday nights when Game of Thrones came out on Wednesday, that's what people talked about. People talked about that show. People that you know that you knew watched you be like, "Oh, yo, what happened in Game of Thrones last night it was crazy. It was insane." Like, you know, blah 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 blah, et cetera, et cetera. Go off into the discussion about what happened that episode, and it kind of gains a cultural traction in that regard because it's a. It's a pattern of existence that a bunch of people are experiencing all at once. And you compare that kind of to the, the modern, like, binging era. And it's different because, like, um, people now watch it at completely different paces. There's people like me who I can't watch a bunch of episodes of TV all, like, in the same day. Like, I can't watch an entire season of TV in a day. I'll literally go insane. Like, my brain will be numbed. I can only watch, like, one or two episodes. But then there's people that love binging stuff. They love doing it. So they binge the whole thing. There's people that will that can get through the whole thing in a week. I might get through an entire season of a show in, like, two weeks to a month. There's some people that might get through it in two months. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not this this pattern of everybody watching at the same time because it's so different. So it's not as much an easy a topic of conversation as it was before. And the second thing I want to talk about, which I think is more pressing, is the way in which television content is being made nowadays. I, and this is personal opinion, people can disagree with me. I personally think that uh, a lot of streaming services are going for a quantity over quality approach to their TV. So let, let's use Netflix for example about what they're doing. Basically, Netflix will release a bunch of like original shows and say say they, they release 10, 10 Netflix original shows all season one. They just started, right? Season one goes out. Good. Netflix will come up with like a metric that they deem that a show needs to cross. And so let's say that two shows cross this metric, like Wednesday, obviously, massive, big show, another show. Say so two shows cross, eight don't. The two shows that cross the metric get a season two, the rest of them get canceled, and they get moved in with new stuff. And while that may seem like a good business decision at the front of it, because obviously you want TV that people are watching, that you know people are uh, going to watch, because that's how you make your money, but... 
that's not exactly how all shows work. For example, when Breaking Bad came out, it did not have a ton of people watching it in the first season. It was a slow burn for Breaking Bad, and that's because the show was written as a slow burn. But Breaking Bad is widely considered one of, if not the best show by some, ever made. So if Breaking Bad came out in this modern sort of like um, quantity over quality streaming era, it would probably have never made it to five seasons. Like genuinely, it would have never made it. And then we would have been out of one of the greatest shows ever. It's like, and you know, obviously, again, I understand why, but it's not conclusive to the best arts to do it this way you're going to lose out on a lot of great art and it also means that these massive shows like game of thrones that take so much time effort work bunch of actors right like all these these people it's a hard show to make compared to like a any other show really like aren't going to be made because the the streaming company doesn't want to put that risk into making a show they'd rather have a show that costs a lot less money to produce and just test the waters you know because maybe you could get a smash hit like wednesday without putting a whole bunch of money into it and you know there are ideas you know we keep trying we keep putting out shows and eventually some will succeed and it'll work for them in terms of viewership but at the end of the day being the the company or the streaming service that puts out these massive massive shows that are become important to culture important to just the the creations of the time and they get the merchandising deals the commercial deals the, all this kind of stuff that is more worth it than just having a semi successful show but I'm I'm wary that something like that's going to happen again because they're not willing to take the risk. And that sucks because obviously as a person who enjoys creations, enjoys art, I love I love really cool uh ideas and ones that are really that are larger than life. I'm I can't come up with the vocabulary word cuz that to make concussions my brain is permanently damaged it's like a tv static just reverberating between my ears 24 7 um i like when shows they reach for something you know they're 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 trying to be brave they're trying to do something special right i like that type of shit um and also just in general building off of this and stuff it feels like new ideas aren't even being pursued and i don't think it's because we've run out of ideas or people aren't creative anymore or whatever the case may be i think it's because the again these tv execs and like movie studio execs they would rather be comfortable than bold They'd rather make something that they know will perform decently well than to risk something not performing well. It's why you see a lot of reboots of things, reruns of things, like just, you know, spinoffs of other shows and such. And obviously this can be done well, like uh, with Better Call Saul, for example. It was done really well. That show's great as a spinoff of Breaking Bad. Great job. But then you see other kind of flops that exist such as velma or um what is it that 90s show the like the reboot of that the 70s show um those are you know reboots of or just like new iterations of previous ips and they're not doing as well and i think it's again i don't think it's because of a lack of fresh ideas i think it's because those fresh ideas aren't being pursued by the people with the money to make it happen they would rather do stuff again that'll be comfortable for them like they know that people will watch velma even if it's not that good they know people will watch that 90s show even if it's not that good they're not trying to make groundbreaking tv or cinema they're just not and it's sad and like I mean, I could go all, all, on forever, I'll continue on to many different topics about this, but I really just, I'm, I, I came here to focus on TV, so I'm going to focus on TV. And 
it's just sad. And like, you know, an, another thing is a problem that like really gets to me, right? I really like feel for the creator in this instance is so somebody writes a screenplay for a story, like a story for a show, oh, sorry, <laughs> a story for a show. And, you know, they get in talks with people, let's say Netflix, because I've just been using them as an example. Netflix buys their show idea. They own the show idea now. They're in the process of making it. They do season one. Doesn't hit the metric they want. Cancel the show. The creators just, what are they going to do now? Because more likely than not, they don't own their own IP anymore because now it was made into a Netflix original. Netflix bought the idea from you, which means that maybe an idea for a story or a show that they made that's supposed to take up like three or four possible seasons is literally now just gone. Just gone. They, they cannot pursue that idea anymore at all. It's lost to the halls of the world because... The streaming service didn't feel like continuing with it. And it's sad. It's really sad because I would hate I would hate if I had one of those ideas that I was just like, oh my God, this is the idea. Like and I have some of those now where I'm I'm working on stuff. I'm like, oh my God, like this shit. If I could get this done and execute it, it would be amazing. And to think that you could make something that you feel so passionately and strongly about it doesn't get done right by the parent company that bought it from you and they just cancel it and it's just canned your idea is done it's heartbreaking man and it's really like discouraging and i've I've been (laughs) i've been really negative this entire video about the modern state of affairs um but i hope that at the end of the day great art will always win i hope that that is the case but the market doesn't seem to be kind of driving it that way you know there's more money to be made in not doing so which means that's the realm that these tv producers and executives are going to pursue because they're in the business of making money not making art if art makes money they make art if half-assed shit makes them more money that's what they make they don't give a fuck about making art for art's sake they make art to exploit it for capital. And that is sad because we're currently in a stage where art is not as profitable, which means that art doesn't have the legs to stand on to be made. And again, you know, hopefully, you know, if you're one of those people and you're watching this and you're like, man, I have a great screenplay idea, chase it. Don't let this discourage you. Chase it. Chase it down. Because you could be the reviver of the artistic side of television. You could be the catalyst for it. Your show could be the thing that a TV executive sees that and they're like, there's no way. We cannot pursue this. Doesn't matter how much money it's going to cost. Doesn't matter how risky it's going to be. We have to do this because the upside is so massive. Um... Yeah, so that's that's my little rant for the day. It's the very first episode ever of the writer's block, me talking about kind of my qualms or whatever with the modern state of television. My hair's been fucking crazy this whole little show episode. Never mind that. We do our best, we do our best here in Ball Pit Studios. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoy this kind of, you know, this kind of content, me just sitting down and talking about my ideas. Um, hey, my hairline not looking bad, man. It's not receding too much. I got a big forehead. Nah, I got four. Look at that. I got four. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, but yeah, if you like this type of content where I just kind of talk, be one myself, like, like, comment, subscribe, let me know. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for supporting. I love you guys. Have a great rest of your day, night, week, month, year, etc. period of time. Goodbye.